I want to talk about two January 6 cases because on the surface, they appear to be somewhat similar. But in fact, they couldn't be more different. Uh, the first case involves a videographer, a journalist, who was charged with uh, a series of offenses related to January 6th. In fact, entering or remaining in a restricted area, disorderly or disruptive conduct in a restricted area, disorderly conduct in a Capitol building, parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building. And the other case involves somebody whose name you'll recognize, Ray Epps. Who is Ray Epps? He is one of the um, uh, members of the Arizona Oath Keepers. He was very visibly present um, in the period leading up to January 6th. In fact, on January 5th, you can see videos of Ray Epps demanding, egging, urging, cajoling people to go inside the Capitol to quote him, that's where our problems are, it's that way, and you can see him pointing to the Capitol. And so Ray Epps is very actively involved in the crowd action that leads up to the breach of the Capitol. And Ray Epps is now kind of finally facing a charge, but yet it's a very mysterious charge. It's a charge of disorderly conduct. That's it. So let me talk about the two cases one by one, because like I say, there's a surface similarity in both cases of disorderly conduct charge. But in the case of the first guy, his name is Stephen Horn. Why is he being charged at all? And in the second case, I'll go on to argue, is that all that Ray Epps did? A little bit of disorderly conduct? Where are all the other charges that would seem logical in his case? And in fact, that's, that have been applied to other people who seem to have done much less than anything Ray Epps did. So let me start with Stephen Horn, because this is a guy who is not only charged, but has just been convicted. And the conviction here is a little different than with the other protesters, because no one can really say that this is a guy who is going in to disrupt the, the count, uh, to obstruct what was happening in the Senate. Why? This is a journalist. This is a guy who has, you can look him up on social media, by the way, his handle on X, on Twitter, at Stephen Horn, H-O-R-N. And you can see this is a guy who covers and writes about and, and, and does journalism on a whole bunch of topics. And apparently on January 6th, he says that, quote, I did not enter the Capitol building as part of the protest or for cheap thrills, but to accurately document and record a significant event which was taking place. Who can deny it was a significant event? Who can deny that it warranted journalistic coverage? This guy was essentially a reporter who accompanied people. He went inside the Capitol, but his goal and his actions in the Capitol were essentially to document what happened. And yet here he is now with a guilty verdict facing penalties um, connected with these four separate convictions. Now, Let's talk about Ray Epps. Ray Epps, you would expect, would be facing serious charges. Obstruction of justice. Uh, instigation. I mean, if anybody was inciting people to go inside the Capitol, there's only one guy on video you can see doing that. It's not Trump. Trump has no statements of incitement even remotely comparable to Ray Epps. And Ray Epps is speaking directly to the crowd at the Capitol. I mean, Trump is talking at the rally, which is a, a ways away, and Trump is saying, let's march peacefully and patriotically toward the Capitol. But here's Ray Epps telling people, go inside, go inside the Capitol. So this guy you would think would be facing serious charges. And the question is, why isn't he? So here you've got Charlie Kirk, you've got Julie Kelly all saying this is very suspicious. And I want to offer a theory that may explain what's really going on here. Some people have said that Ray Epps is a, uh, an agent of the cops. He's some sort of a member of the police state, that he's an informant. That's a possibility. I suppose you cannot write that off. The other possibility is that Ray Epps was approached by the FBI and he decided to cooperate with them. I mean, think about a similar situation, not January 6th, in which you've got a bunch of guys, let's say, involved in a robbery, and one of them goes, I'll help you. He tells the cops, I will identify the other guys. I'll... So if Ray Epps were to tell the police or tell the FBI, look, a lot of my friends were there, 
I'm an oath keeper. I know a lot of guys. I'll tell you who was where. I'll tell you what they were doing. I'll give you all kinds of information. They go, okay, in that case, you won't face any serious charges in exchange for the information you're giving us. We'll give you basically a slap on the wrist. The point I'm trying to make is that that explanation would explain why the government is treating Epps so lightly. Uh, of course, the other explanation is that the government didn't want to charge Epps at all, that he is an inside man. Uh, but then when there's a big outcry and all the stuff about, wait a minute, there's unequal justice. Where's the equal justice under the law? Why hasn't Ray Epps been charged? It's kind of like, okay, well, let's charge him with something. Very similar to Hunter Biden. Okay, listen, you know, our, the cat is out of the bag. We try to take this before the judge and get Hunter Biden off the hook, but the judge is kind of really suspicious now. This is not good. We have to charge him with something. So let's charge him with something that doesn't involve Joe Biden. So there's a similarity here, I think, in the logic behind the treatment of Hunter Biden and the treatment of one Ray Epps. You don't have to live with aches and pains. If aches and pains are your problem, Relief Factor is your solution. Debbie and I are proof of it. We started taking Relief Factor a couple of years ago, and what a difference we've seen in our joints. Nothing short of amazing. Aches and pains are totally gone thanks to this 100% drug-free solution called Relief Factor. How does it work? Relief Factor supports your body's fight against inflammation. That's the source of aches and pains. More than 1 million people have tried Relief Factor, and guess what? Over 70% have gone on to order more. Why? Because it works for them. Debbie's a true believer. She can now do exercises that for several years she wasn't able to do. So Relief Factor has been a big game changer for her, her aunt, other members of our family, Mike here in the studio, and for many other people. You too can benefit. Try it for yourself. Order the three-week quick start for the discounted price of just $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 800-4-RELIEF to find out more about this offer. The number again to call 800-4-RELIEF or go to relieffactor.com feel the difference.